Hi, this is artist Tara Reed, and today I'm going to do a video tutorial of one of my most popular blog posts, which is how to sew your own yarmulke. Kippa, kippa, seems to be pronounced many different ways. I married into a Jewish family and was super excited to be able to design the Festival of Lights fabric collection for Riley Blake, which I'll be using throughout this demonstration. But first, let me bring my lovely assistant, aka my husband Craig in to show you the different yarmulkes that we have in our house and why we love this pattern design which is reversible so much. All right so my husband has kindly agreed to model all of these yarmulkes so the first one I want you to put on Craig is the one from the synagogue okay. which is a four part a four piece yarmulke see it sticks up a little bit so turn around so it's not a great fit but it works obviously all right so the next one he's gonna model which I just love is we have a whole collection can you hold it up a little so I can see yeah. it of um, of yarmulkes from special events this is from his cousin's wedding in 1979 so you get a trip down memory lane whenever we need to pull these out but it is a bit large and pointy I'm not sure who designed the pattern turn to the side because really kind of makes a football shape to your head all right okay take that one off now he's going to show you what the one with the pattern that i have looks like so that covers the head fits nice and flat all right turn and then flip it the other way and this is also reversible so, oh, so yeah. you couldn't see that. Okay, so yeah, so you can make it with maybe a Hanukkah pattern on one side and maybe just a basic or a Star of David on the other side so that you can use it for both Hanukkah, Passover, and all the other times when you need to wear your yarmulke. Thank you so much for modeling, Craig. All right, first things first, let's talk about supplies. The first thing you need is to get the directions. You don't need to print them. You can look at them on your iPad, but easier for this video for me to print them. This is a nine page PDF that gives you very detailed instructions complete with photos. So it's gonna be a great reminder after you watch this video of how this all goes together. The one thing you do need to print is the template. Make sure you print this at actual size and then double check that this red line is one inch long so that your template is the correct size. The, um, this project is great for using with scraps. The template is basically four inches by three inches. So if you have a couple different scraps around, um, this is going to be great for that. You're going to need six pieces, six template pieces cut out of um, something for the outside and six for the inside. Now for the outside, I'm just using my Star of David design from my Festival of Lights fabric, which is all the fabrics I'm using in this demo. So that's just a random cut. Then on the opposite side, I decided to get a little fancier and do a combination of Star of David and dreidels, which were cut basically from this fabric, but the white version. So I fussy cut so that each of these dreidels are going to be perfectly placed in that section. Now let me show you on this one, I used a different print, but similar concept. I did a lot of fussy cutting because I wanted these big dreidels to be on the opposite sides. Then I wanted the four dreidels, friends and family. So the thing to remember if you're fussy cutting is that even though you read it this way, because the instructions fit the best that way, this is actually the top of your yarmulke. That's my preferred term. So you wanna make sure when you fussy cut, you have the design heading towards the center and then leaving about a quarter inch seam allowance so you're not sewing onto that. Then you obviously need thread, scissors to cut the fabric, sewing machine. Uh, now, an optional item, which I really like for this, is a sleeve form, I believe this is called. It's what people use to iron sleeves, especially if they do a lot of fashion sewing. It's just a lot easier to press these seams, which I will show you when we get to that point, on a little form like this than on an ironing board. But ironing board will work. You don't have to get this, just showing you your options. 
But now that we're talking about ironing boards, let's talk about irons. The best iron to use is the iron that you have. But if you have more than one, let's look at options. So you can use a regular big one, but you'll see that's awfully large to be, to be seeing what you're doing for pressing those seams. So if you have something smaller, I recommend you use something smaller. So this is like the, a mini, a more mini, and you'll see that's gonna be a lot more manageable. You're gonna see what you're doing. Most recently, somebody told me that they use their Cricut Mini, which is really designed for crafting and vinyl, for small seams. Look at that, that is absolutely amazing. I was so happy that she shared that with me. So I'm gonna be using this during um, this tutorial. But again, you don't have to run out and buy this or the other. You can use what you, what you have, just showing you your options. The first step is going to be sewing all these pieces together. You're basically going to put that, I'm gonna show you on the white one since it does actually have an order to it since I'm alternating fabrics. So you're gonna line them up like this and then we're just going to be sewing each of these seams. All right, so we are at the sewing machine now. I have my six pieces all laid out. I have my template that I can refer to for where to start, and then my instructions. So we're on step two, and you'll see it gives you detailed instructions and lots of pictures, so you're gonna be able to move along with this even if you're not watching the video at the same time. So I'm gonna take two of my pieces and right sides together, line that edge up, I have my quarter inch foot on here, so it's gonna be really easy to do the seams, quarter inch seam allowance. Then I'm just gonna line this up and eyeball it to get an idea of where I want to start. So again, not off the edge like you do a lot, but a little bit in. I'm gonna put that down. No, not, okay, so maybe if I, there we go, put the, needle down first, make sure it's where I want it. I'm going to sew this edge and then I'm going to stop just before the other edge. So that's the first seam. I'm just going to trim that off real quick. So now I'm just going to open that. So again, if you want to press your seams first, you can go press that. I'm going to do it at the end. <clears throat> I'm going to grab my next piece, line that up. I'm going to go all the way around and always starting at about so see how I ended right there. So this one, I'm going to start about the same. So the inside of the top is going to have these little parts that you'll be able to press flat because you didn't sew all the way off the end. So I'm going to go all the way around and then I will pause and show you how to do leave your little opening. So now we have all six pieces sewn together. And now we just need to do this final side. So we're going to assume that this is gonna be the inside. To trim those as I go. This is going to be the inside where we're going to turn it. So this, on this last seam, I'm going to just sew a teeny bit, leave an opening and a teeny bit. And I mean a teeny bit. The first time I did this, I left like an inch and it was really hard to flip this thing. So leave about that much. So now it is all sewn together with a hole to turn it. And we're going to do the same thing with the blue ones, but we're gonna sew every single seam. We're not gonna leave a hole. We only need that on one side. And then we're gonna take this to the little pressing form and we're going to press all of these seams open. Now we are ready to press these seams, which is step four. You'll see we have directions, show you some pictures, so you will be good to go. Uh, a little bit about this little Cricut Mini in case you wanna learn more about this for small seams. 
um, you always want to have it sitting on this thing and not on your tabletop or that'll go very badly. So you basically push that button and the three different lights are different amounts of heat. And I want the most heat possible because we're working with cotton. So I'm going to click that. When these turn green, it is all heated up and ready to go. All right, we're all heated up. So we're just going to move along and press these seams flat. And then I kind of go on the edge to get that center part. And you're just going to move around and do each seam. I love this little thing. Again, not sponsored by Cricut, but if they want to, they can reach out. Now, nah, I've bought all these things for myself. We have to say these things in videos so you know if we've been given things or bought things. But I never recommend anything I don't like, whether it's been given to me or not. All right, and see how when you do all the seams and kind of flatten that, it still has some bulk there, but it, it gets a bit flatter. So now we're gonna do the same with the other side. And when you do, when you do the seam where you left the opening, you want to press it like there isn't an opening because when we're totally done, you're going to hand stitch, slip stitch that together so that you won't be able to see that stitching so that you can have these be reversible. Because if you do it on the machine, it's gonna create a weird bulk and then you're just gonna have a one-sided, which is fine. I kind of like being able to use them both ways if I've gone through all this effort to sew all of this together. Kind of flatten that center. Put this one back on there and flatten that center a little bit more too. All right, then we're gonna turn that off. Let that cool down. Now we have our, our two halves and we're ready to put them together. We're almost done. All right, we're on to step five, finishing the kippa, our very last step. And there's, again, lots of picture illustrations on your directions. Basically, you're going to put the, we're gonna put these right sides together. So pop one, then you're gonna match up the seams and the edges. And you can either use pins or I really like these clips and I clip them at each of the six seams. Okay, so we have that all lined up the outer edges and each of the six seams. And now we are gonna go sew around the bottom. Now we're going to stitch all the way around the circle with a quarter inch seam. Okay, you wanna make sure you keep these flat <laughs> as you go. So you can either use a stiletto or the edge of your scissors. All right, now you can just go around your edges and just snip a little bit so that you're gonna have a better curve when you flip that. Just make sure you do not clip your stitch line. All right, now that we did that, we're going to find the opening that we left and we're gonna very gently turn that right side out. And I use my fingers to press around the outer edge, get that nice and smooth. All right, so that's the basics. Now you're gonna take it back to the ironing board and you're going to make sure you get these out nicely to the edge press that and then when that is done you can leave it like that or if you want to do a little uh, top stitch totally optional could be really pretty in silver and then you're just going to take thread i would use white since this is mostly white along there and you're going to you know 
do a hidden stitch to stitch that together. And that's it. Once you get the hang of it, it's, um, you could really mass produce these. They're not very hard. It just, the, the most time consuming part is honestly cutting out all of the template pieces. But enjoy, and if you make these and share them on social media, I hope you tag me so I can see what patterns you decided to use and, and how they came out.